Guys, Murph here. This is going to be a really interesting video. It's kind of a step different from what I've been doing with the vlog documentary, kind of showing start to finish the process of creating Murph's car, Murph's car town and sports shop, right? So I wanted Kim to come up with a set of questions, several questions or whatever, to ask me, I guess like days before I opened the shop. And it just allows me to kind of think for a minute and reflect, inform you guys of the process and everything that's kind of going on that may be either behind the scenes or things that may not be covered in the vlogs. And also to kind of shed some light on my journey, the process, my thinking, where I came from, how I got to the shop, right? And I really hope that you enjoyed this video. A lot of time and effort went into not just the interview, but everything else in general. I know you guys have been enjoying the vlogs, and I really appreciate that. So I'm sure and I hope that you enjoyed this little interview that Kim and I conducted. Big shout out to Kim, the podcast, and the channel favorite for doing a fantastic job. <laughs> Speaking of which, that was her texting me. Uh, but doing a fantastic job at coming up with the questions and also being also being the interviewer, interviewing me with some great hard thinking questions that, you know, really made me think, even though I probably should have already known the answers to them. But sit back, relax, and enjoy this interview. What made you want to open a car shop? What made me want to open a car shop? A lot of things. Desire for sports, my passion for sports. I always wanted to do something in the field of sports, you know, whether it was coaching, when I was really young playing, and then just kind of sports cars, you know, really became a big hobby for me. And then next thing you know, I'm in the counseling field and I don't want to be a counselor anymore so I kind of fall back to my roots of you know sports and after a little bit of research here I am opening a card shop. What was the most stressful part of, your, of opening the shop? I'd say the most stressful part of this is trying to make it look right and I mean by that is I want it to be appealing to someone I want there to be good prices, good product, good memorabilia. I don't want someone to walk in, walk around for a minute or two and walk out. Having Merce Car Town and Sports Shop be likable to everybody, although that will never happen, is probably the biggest stressor because no matter who walks in the door, I want them to be like, oh, I like this place. This is a cool place. So that's probably the biggest stressor for me. What about the most exciting part of opening the shop? Most exciting part has to be being your own boss. As that's also very stressful, but it's also very exciting. You know, I don't have to report to no manager. You know, I don't. I, I guess I do have to punch in technically, but like, it's just those little nuances of working like a nine to five job or, or something like that. You know, downtown. There's none of that. So being able to be immersive in sports, memorabilia, cards, talking about it, you know, having a TV on, having a game in the background. It just makes it a very favorable environment compared to like a cubicle and I think that's probably the most exciting part. Whom supported you with the idea of the shop? Whom supported me with the idea of the shop? Well, my dad always supported me in being my own boss, opening my own business. He was a convenience store owner but he told me to never open a convenience store. And he was like, go be your own boss, but just don't open a convenience store. So being, you know, kind of having my own place kind of derived from him, specifically the shop has to be my fiance, Kim. Definitely probably the biggest supporter because I definitely had my doubts. And she just talked to me about it and through conversation, her support, I was able to, you know, say, okay, this is the right idea. This is the right plan. Are you going to have Super Bowl parties here? 
I do want to have Super Bowl parties. The restaurant next door, Bar 101, is a very popular sport place. There will be a little bit of competition there. However, being a sports card shop, I believe that kind of uh, attracts its own traffic, per se. You know, maybe someone doesn't want to be in that crowd or drink or whatever. They just want to come here and just, you know, watch the game, have fun, place a little bit of betting. <laughs> um, but I definitely want to have Super Bowl parties, you know, it could be World Series Game 7, Stanley Cup Game 7, uh, watch parties, any big game, all-star games. So I definitely don't want to just be Super Bowl, but I think come the Super Bowl in February might be a good place to start, maybe. What makes you different from other card shops? Oh, that's so easy. There's two major things that makes me different from other card shops. One is there's space to sit down, go through cards, you know, buy a box of cards, you know, rip it, you know, sitting at a table or something, which a lot of places don't have it. There's a lot of card shops, not just in Rhode Island, but you know, Massachusetts, you know, Connecticut, wherever. You walk into the card shop, you buy the cards and you leave. There's no there's no fun in that. You know, you kinda wanna be there in an environment, be comfortable, have fun. And that is one of my focal points of this place, Mars Card Town Sports Shop, is to be a place where you can buy cards, you can, you know, open cards, you can go through cards, all in the same place. And then the second one is my social media presence, whether it's Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. I have a podcast. A lot of these other card shops don't have that for whatever reason, because I think, you know, 21st century social media is a great, great way to get attention and get you know your name out there. So having the podcast, having the YouTube channel, social media accounts is something that's really going to separate me. How did you start the podcast? How did I start the podcast? That was something that was, I don't want to say it was impulsive because there was its own planning method behind it, but I feel like that happened so fast. You know, it took me a, over a year to plan the card shop from. Business plan, doing research and stuff like that. And then with the podcast, I did my own research and stuff, but it's like, you go buy a mic, you have a computer, recording software, and you're good to go. I basically started the podcast with it being a segue into the card shop. I wanted, before I started the card shop, I wanted something to kind of preface and I think the podcast is the perfect segue because I wasn't in a position to open the card shop just yet because I was still finishing my master's degree. So being able to have a podcast that I was recording Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays at the time was a really good, you know, foundational starting ground. And then, you know, slowly, slowly build up, talk about the card shop a little bit. So starting the podcast way back in January of 2021, yeah, 2021. It feels like it was yesterday, but it also feels like it was forever ago that I started it. But it definitely happened a lot quicker than the card shop. How are you going to tie in the podcast with the shop? Oh. So I, so way that I'm going to try to tie in the podcast to the shop or shop to the podcast is kind of talk about it on, at least talk about the card shop on the podcast hey, this happened at the shop today. Oh, someone opened this, you know, box of cards and they were able to pull, you know, a Trevor Lawrence rookie card or, you know, a Tom Brady rookie card. And it's like, oh, whoa, it's crazy. And then in the shop, I kind of want to have maybe like, uh, I don't want to say a billboard, but like, you know, kind of like a picture of maybe like the podcast logo. And just like a little advertisement just to kind of, you know, get the name out there. Cause not a lot of people listen to podcasts, you know, they like their music, maybe their radio, uh, you know, their talk shows. And I kind of want to, Hey, you know, you're in the card shop, if you're interested or looking for something to listen to. Here's my podcast, I, which I also do. So I could definitely want to have them both go hand in hand. Once the card shop opens up, I don't want it to be one or the other. What did you do to learn about the business life? So my, what I had to do to learn about this business life and the background I had, I kind of alluded to it alluded to it earlier, it was my dad was a convenience store owner. And no matter what business you own, there's a lot of the same fundamentals, a lot of the same principles that goes into no matter what business, card shop, 
you know, salon, restaurant, nail place, doesn't matter. And I think I was really able to learn a lot from him because he was able to kind of teach me the ropes of, hey, if you want to, you know, own your own place, you're going to have to work long hours. You're going to have to make sacrifices, do this and do that. I hope you're ready to sign up for it. So having that mindset going into the initial research part of it was definitely something I'm glad I already knew instead of having to find that out a month into the shop. Really, it came down to just doing my research to make sure that this was the right plan. And if it wasn't for Google, YouTube, hearing about other people opening their own business or their own card shop, I don't think I would have been able to make the best decision possible along with the support from my fiance or wife, depending when you're listening to this, Kim, where she was able to kind of talk me, you know, whether it was talk me into it, talk me down from something, and just really, you know, just be an ear to listen. A big plan of mine to get the word out there is social media, word of mouth, like I mentioned, whether it's the podcast, you know, YouTube videos, going out and about and handing people business cards, leaving business cards behind. The restaurant next door, Bar 101, they said I can leave business cards there, which is, you know, super awesome. Actually, I was at the mall today, and, you know, I walked around the place and I left business cards here and there and all around the place just to kind of subtly get word out to, you know, people that may not know about it, you know, because they may not follow, you know, Merce Car Town Sports Shop on social media. Not yet. So, it's definitely going to be a tough process that I'm still going through, and I think even when the shop opens, it's something I will always be going through, because I may get customers coming in the door, but there's still people out there that may not know that this place exists. So, I want to try to get as many different populations as I can. Talk to me about the location of your shop. How did you end up in Johnston, Rhode Island? So Johnston, Rhode Island, the place that I'm at now, it happened in a weird way. So when I first started looking for potential locations, I did come across this place. I looked through the windows and I didn't, it's not that I didn't like it. It's just, I didn't want to jump on anything first. So I continued to do my research and then I found another place in Smithfield, Rhode Island. I don't know, probably 10 minutes up the highway from here. And I reached out to the, the guy, have a conversation. I look at the place and it looks good. Things, for whatever reason, didn't work out. And, you know, I was, I don't want to say I was desperate looking for a place, but I just, you know, I liked the place in Smithfield so much, I, I still wanted a place so badly. So I reached out to the broker who was, you know, representing this place. Quick conversation, got a tour of the place. And I was like, oh, I love this place. You know, it's kind of walk, like walking into a house for the first time, you know, before you buy it, or sitting in the driver's seat of a new car before you buy it. You know, one of those feelings. Have a good conversation, a little bit of negotiating, next thing you know, I'm in here. And it honestly happened so quickly. The place in Smithfield took over a month. The place here in Johnston took two weeks, not even. What are you most nervous about? <sighs> nervous. So... Like I answered earlier, there's a lot of excitement. There's also a lot of nerves. Running your own business, making sure you're here every day, pleasing every customer, having you know the best or at least competitive pricing, being able to be a one-stop shop for people, you know whatever they need when it comes to sports, memorabilia, cards. I think being nervous is something you shouldn't hide from, and you definitely don't want it to overwhelm you. But it's normal. People get nervous for you know whatever reason. And I've accepted that, and being able to accept that, I think, has been able to bring the best out of me instead of hiding from my nerves. I was nervous about, you know, reaching out to a broker, you know, just to look at a place. You know, just kind of slowly overcoming these nerves or these fears. Being able to do that in slow, small increments really kind of puts you in a better position. So when you do get nervous, you know how to face it. And I think in my short time researching, planning, Open, you know, in the process of opening the place, I was really able to kind of conquer nerves, but I'm definitely prepared for nerves down the road because I know that they'll be there. What's your favorite part of the shop? My favorite part of the shop? I think my favorite part of the shop is I can decorate it however I want. Obviously, I want it to be an appealing place. I want it to be welcoming, cozy. But like I can put 
virtually anything anywhere. Obviously, I want people to like it, but at the end of the day, I can do however I want. And I have memorabilia on the walls. It may sit there for a week, months, maybe even a year, but you know what? I'm able to display this stuff, whether it's the memorabilia or the cards. I'm able to display it, and it can be kind of like my own little man cave where, yeah, that picture may be on the wall for a year, but at least I'm able to look at it every day for a year instead of, you know, all wrapped up in bubble wrap. Do you have a favorite card? Card. I think I do have a favorite card, and it's... I don't... I have three favorite cards. There's what no, makes it your favorite? Oh, God. What makes it... Okay, so my three favorite cards, no order, no, no first, second, or third. I have a rookie Ronald Acuna Jr. because he's my favorite baseball player right now. I have a rookie, um, rookie Raphael Devers card, and I also, because he's my favorite player, second favorite player. And then I have a Ted Williams card from 1952. All three of those are my favorite for separate reasons. The Ted Williams card, arguably best player in Red Sox history. Raphael Devers, fantastic Red Sox player now. I think he's going to be a absolute stud, superstar Hall of Fame when his career is over, and probably the same for Ronald Acuna Jr. And I think they're in good investments now, but because I have such fondness over these players, it makes them my favorite cards. Okay. Who's your favorite player of all time? Oh, God. My favorite player of all time has definitely kind of revolved a little bit. So if you ask me this question, 10, 15 years ago, I would have said Nomar Garcia Parra. I named my dog after him, so <laughs> it has to mean something. You know, when he left the Red Sox and kind of became David Ortiz, now he's retired. You know, I kind of mentioned Raphael Devers a little bit. Xander Bogarts, who ironically, you know, I named my dog after him again. I mentioned Ronald Acuna Jr., Ted Williams. So, all time, I think my favorite player is David Ortiz, just because of what he did for the city of Boston and the Red Sox. But since he's retired, I'll kind of answer answer it this way. My favorite player right now might have to be Alexander Bogarts. Or Rafael Devers. Or Ronald Acuna Jr. See, I have, the, I have this <laughs> problem. I have a problem. I can't just pick one. Are you just going to sell or buy, buy and trade? So a lot of card shops only sell stuff. And I want to be a destination, a location, a shop where you can buy, sell, and trade. If you want to walk in and you just want to buy some, buy something, fine. If you want to walk in and if I find it interesting and of value to me, we can work out a deal and, we, and you, know, you can buy it to me or I guess sell it to me. Or you come in with a card and maybe you saw you know, a card in the case the other day. I'm like, hey, do you think we can work out a trade here? Similar process, we'll work things out, have a negotiation, conversation, and we'll make a trade. So yes, buy, sell, and trade are gonna be three major pillars to Merce Card Town Sports Shop. I understand you're getting married in a month after opening your shop. How do you feel about that? So yeah, so I am getting married in less than a month from when the card shop opens, and it's, Getting married and going through that process is very stressful. I think less stressful for a guy than it is for a girl. I think that's a conversation for another day for different people. But yeah, it is stressful and it's good to know that a lot of the major detailing is kind of already done. A lot of the decisions are already done for the major ones, at least I'd like to think. <laughs> so kind of being able to focus on the card shop is reassuring. It's reassuring, but I also need to make sure that I don't, you know, just, you know, completely block out what's going on, you know, at the house. You know, I got to make sure that, you know, you know, pets are fed, Kim's okay, you know, any wedding details. So they're both major stressors, stressors the card shop, the wedding, and I guess the podcast too, right? But balancing the two, the wedding and the card shop, it's been surprisingly easier than I thought. And I think that goes a lot to Kim for planning and doing that for the wedding. <laughs> Any future events you plan on having at the shop? So yeah, I definitely want to have, outside of major sporting games that I've already mentioned, I also want to have 
you know, like a trade night. Trade night's become very popular for a lot of sport card enthusiasts, collectors, dealers, flippers, investors, whoever you want to, however you want to title yourself in this industry, in this hobby. And trade night would be where a bunch of people would come in, you know, bring their collection of cards that they want to trade. And I've heard it be kind of referred to as speed dating, where it's a little awkward at first because there's, you know, people you may or may not know, but you're all here for the same reason, and that's to trade cards, right? So that's probably one of the big events that I want to have relatively soon to opening, and I feel like that'd be a great way to kind of introduce the shop to the community, but also introduce the community to the shop. Last question, when is opening day? Opening day, opening day is Thursday, August 26th at 12 p.m. Eastern time, because we are here on the East Coast. I'm super excited for it. it feels like a year ago I was just starting this planning, but yes, opening day is mere days away at this point. Thursday, August 26th, 12 p.m. But first, we do have the sneak peek that I cannot elude from. Sneak peek, which will be the Wednesday before, the day before, at six o'clock here at the shop. And those two events kind of tied together, handcuffed together, I think would be a great way to kind of, you know, make a impact right away. So any last comments that I have is, don't be afraid to stop by, you know, whether you're into sports or not, stop by, say hi, you know, even if you've been out of the game for a really long time, when I say game, I mean the hobby, come by, you know, have a conversation. We can talk about, you know, this team or that team, that player or that player. I don't want this place to just be a place where you walk in, you buy what you want, and then you leave. I want it to be an environment, a comfortable place for people to be able to be in a sport atmosphere with other people that love sports, whether it's sport cards, memorabilia, players, teams, whatever. You know, person A walks in loving team A, person B walks in loving team B. They can have a conversation. It's just, you know, a great atmosphere is what I really want to hammer down and establish. And I think early on, I want to set that tone. However, months, years from now, I don't want to elude from that mindset. Wrap. Cut! <laughs>